Rebecca, how are you? Thank you for Great chatting time. with me. Cool. My name is Ruby Solis. I'm with Black Tree TV. It's nice to meet you. Definitely excited to speak about passing. Um, first, I know this is a personal subject matter to you. In regards to Larson's book, how did that impact you in making this film? Well, hugely. It's how I came to the book. I was trying to, I was trying to piece together a lot of puzzle pieces about, frankly, my own racial identity and my mother's, but you know, essentially mine. And I read the book with a with a view to that, not having any understanding of the historical context of passing. And I came out the other side of reading the book with a newfound understanding of what my grandfather must have done, which, you know, to explain the secrecy and mysteries that are in my family around this issue. And I now know specifically that's what he did. He was African-American and passed white for most of his life. Um, but I suppose, how it became a movie was in a way because I wanted to spend more time with it and in a way because I couldn't turn off my brain. I think it's sort of, it's sort of rare that you come across a piece of source material that sparks your imagination in such a sort of fevered way as this book did. And yes, I think it was because of the emotional connection that I had to it, but also I couldn't stop imagining what the film would look like. You know, as I was reading the book, I thought about it being in black and white, I thought about it being in an unconventional aspect ratio. I thought about certain shots which are in the movie and, and it was clear to me that I knew how to make a movie of it. And was there the writing of the any... script was just, you know, kind of uh, yeah. along the way. Was there any hesitation because you did mention your family, was there any hesitation um, within the secrecy and mystery of all these details while you were digging into it? I'm, I'm sure you had to ask different family members about your grandfather and, uh, maybe there was hesitation. Um, do you feel like there was any discomfort maybe? Yes, I think there was. And I think there has been. And I think the film going out into the world has really helped my family get over that. I mean, and I don't, I don't mean this in a, in, with any judgment. You know, I think it's very hard for children to, to go against what, the wishes of their parents and if if your parental figure is saying this is something that we don't talk about this is something that is hidden then you respect their wishes because you could, there's clearly a, in this instance in this particular story there's clearly a lot of fear and danger around this particular subject matter and, and as a child I think you absorb that too so it sort of makes sense that there was resistance to talk about it and also that there wasn't any knowledge like my grandfather didn't talk about it. By the time he had my mother and her sisters, he was living his life fully white. Like there, right. uh, there was no, they didn't know, they knew family members, but it was complicated. Like family members would come round after hours when the curtains were closed. And yeah, that's, that's a hard life to live. Um, yeah. Do you feel some type of relief? I mean, I, I have to admit, I didn't necessarily know what passing meant, um, until I, I really looked into it and digged into it myself. Um, do you feel some type of relief to actually be able to label that now? Is it some type of comfort maybe? Yes, it is. I feel like in a place that was a lot of swirling ifs and maybes, there, was, there is now at least clarity in understanding what happened. You're curious, is that it? You can ask me anything, anything you want. What have you told them? of your family. You know, I haven't had to worry as much as you'd think. They were my aunts, you see, they took me in after father died and gave me a home of sorts. <sighs> very white, very respectable, very religious. I met John not long after, and as soon as I turned 18 and legal, we got married and, well, went off and left for good. And you're happy? Of course, really. As you say, I have everything I ever wanted. Now with the casting process, um, was that maybe a touchy subject when you, you know, requested from these actors, you'll have to play two roles. Um, maybe if you're black, you'll have to pretend you're white. If you're white, you'll have to pass for black. How did that come about? Was that a touchy subject for the actors? 
Um, no, because they read, they, I mean, the movie's called Passing. They knew what it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think they knew what they were getting into when I handed them the script. I think, you know, I think there was some sort of, oh, that's interesting that you want me to do it. But I think that, you know, it was very important for me to cast black women in the roles. And, you know, I find it, this is about perception and context and how there is no, Mm, there, how there is no monolithic version of blackness or whiteness or femaleness or queerness. I mean, there's so many different binaries here, but it's like the, what I'm trying to say is I think that the black and white movie allows me that, you know, the, to cast black women because when people perceive this film and they start to, you know, get, have opinions about, oh, is that person passing or is that person not passing? It, it sort of excites me in a weird way because I'm like, well, you can't, what you're saying is sort of nonsensical because this world doesn't look like our world, it's in black and white. And also, by the way, your perception of black and white film as black and versus white or black and white as to these two absolutes is also nonsense because black and white is gray. It's a thousand shades of gray, just like this movie is. Well, this is truly an intelligent film. Thank you so much for sharing those details with me and I appreciate it. I've already seen it and I loved it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good